I can get no emails and network connections without doing social media. I, f- I feel like finishing school and flying out to LA and doing everything in person. Yeah, I feel like um, being in person in the studio, those are the producers that get the most placements and are pretty much more accomplished in, like on average. Like an internet producer yeah. compared to a producer that works in the studio, I think on average is... I'm not sure about making more money because there's more money on the internet in my opinion, but they're probably more accomplished. They probably have more placements like on average. Yeah. I definitely. Well, I met everyone I know from, through Instagram because I barely used Instagram before mm-hmm. I started producing. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Meeting people is probably better on social media, but like definitely the work part, I feel like I definitely want to get into studios and stuff more because... From what yeah. I see, it's like probably the different type of process, and it's also a different type of connection. Like, I assume if I'm giving you beats or making beats in front of you, and you really fuck with the vibe and stuff, you probably stay more loyal to me, and I'll probably get more placements with that artist than mm. if I'm just getting a random email that I can discard. At, because everybody got fire beats on the internet, so I think your yeah. personality can like kind of be a saving grace in a way. Why well, you can market? Your- in person to the to the artist like in, in a sense right yeah. when you send an email like you just send the email you gotta hope they open it but like in person you could kind of mm. i mean you, you don't want to like advertise yourself but you know what i mean you could kind of like do a little bit convincing almost yeah kind of mm. like like i don't know like let them know i don't know it's like more personable they, they can attach a face to the music so it's less of a like a cold hard business transaction in a way yeah, yeah. That's why I think some songs are like not as good, like, but the producer has a connection, and they can still like get that beat place. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Wow, I didn't explain that well. I right? noticed that on the the Voice of the Heroes album. Oh, go ahead, Tassi. Because like, <laughs> no, like I'm not I'm not dissing anybody, but I'm just saying like you could tell the beats made by like section mm. eight on those guys like they're in the studio with them like it, it just sounds way higher quality compared to some of the other beats which were just like mm. i guess emailed in or, or whatever placed placed online you know what i mean yeah i feel like you kind of also get to know what the artist likes and doesn't like even better than just what they put out as music because that might yeah. be the sound they were going for like three months ago when they released it but what if they're on something different now and if you're in the studio you can kind of gauge that way better in my opinion, but yeah, yeah. that's crazy. We really don't know how to move at this point. I'm in Central Europe. Nothing's going on here. Dude, don't do social media. So I don't even know what I'm trying to get from this. To be honest, yeah, being from a uh, Europe must be kind of crazy because you do not, you do not have like, art, like major. Well, not, like most of the artists that are like popping are in the states. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's probably why. That's why social media is good, though. Yeah. Because, like, you don't have to be from a specific area. Like, you can just meet people online, like, through yeah. other people, you know? Yeah, exactly. And through collabs and stuff with other producers, you don't have to even get in the studio with artists. You can just get in with, like, a producer that works with them a lot. That's like Raw Wave. Like, I don't other than TNT, like, the guy gets all his beats off YouTube. Facts. It's all online social media. Facts. You can, if you were lucky enough to be one of the beats that Rod Wave chose on, from YouTube, pretty much a platinum pack just by uploading on youtube so you never know literally yeah. and you don't even have to have a big following Facts. it's just, like, it just how many subs it. does mars have like what 300 or something like he he does not a big big page i got like two or three songs with rod in like two days yeah, no. like That's all weird. from youtube and then just raw wave just dms him one day mm. did he join his live i remember seeing that That's he went crazy. live on instagram yeah yeah for like a second that's 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 the power of the internet it's like it's a little bit less high percentage and being in person but you definitely like like still have a chance i haven't even been to the u.s in years like not since i started producing i haven't went once mm. and you still <laughs> went quadruple platinum or whatever i don't know <laughs> facts on facts on facts so <laughs> definitely the studio is not the only way but mm, it helps though yeah, it definitely can help. Definitely is like it's a good place some to go. People, out bro, people be like, I'm not gonna say any names, but like, I know people that like they're spending a lot of money to travel to the states and stuff to to get in sessions and stuff. And like, mm. 
it's, it's I mean, from my perspective, it's not really paying off. Yeah. Like I get, I get you're going to the studio, you're like networking and stuff, but at a certain point, it's like you're spending like two, three thousand dollars to go for a few weeks, and like you're not really returning, like getting a return on investment. You know what I mean? Mm, exactly. Uh, but they, they, people just think, oh, I gotta go, gotta go there, gotta go to the studio with these people. I mean, if you have the opportunity to do it, but like you gotta kind of yeah understand look, yeah. it's not always the best idea. Yeah, just yeah. being in LA is not probably the like gonna guarantee you anything. So. Well, it's saturated. Like, just because you're there doesn't mean, like, everything's going to happen for you. There's, like, like 50,000 other producers that are there as well. Mm, crazy, true, yeah. But it's also the same odds when you're sending a beat through email or anything. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But at least it's free oh. when you're sending an email, you know what I mean? Yeah. Facts. I, I guess it's all about who you know, even on the internet. If you know people that can put you in a position to, like, get a song, yeah. or, like, I don't know. If you know what do you guys right think person, about managers? Oh, I actually been like approached by a lot of people to be like, "Yo, can I be your manager?" I just I got burned once, like signing to a producer. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. kind of like I kind of got PTSD on signing to somebody and giving them a percentage. But I seen mm -hmm. some certain manager producer relationships that are really like, damn, they really getting it going. Like lately, I seen um Manny get too easy of Drake placement. It's like. Yo, if I can get a manager and give me a Jake face and yo, take my 20%, bro, all day. So, I don't know. If I were to get someone to manage me, I'd have to see results. Like, I don't want to just give people a percent and I'm, you know, networking on my own. I'm sending it all on my own. Yeah, you know? it's like, they'd have to do something for me. At the same time, I don't really need, like, somebody to manage me. I don't have that much going on. I'm not, like, a... Mm. a plat like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like, some producers definitely seem like... If they didn't have managers, like, they'd get disorganized and some shit. But, like, I really have my shit in order on that type of... It's not too hard to do it on your own. It's just, the real problem is, like, if you're getting a loads of placements and you have to deal with all this paperwork all the time, yeah, that's exactly. when I could say it might be worth it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. But I'm, I think it's, like, yeah. it's the same thing about, like, people thinking they have to go to the U.S. or whatever to get in a session. It's, like, people think they need a manager because, like, it gives them opportunities. Mm. Yeah. But, like... But to be honest, out of all the people I've met that do management and stuff, like maybe like 10% of them actually have the ability to actually like make some plays. The rest of them are just there to mm. they, they see you're doing something and they just want to collect off of it. Facts. Yeah. That's that's the whole uh, thing that I'm scared of. Signing to somebody definitely are. like a little bit long term, like even just two years. Two years is a long ass time for you to be taking 20%. So... But yeah, you don't want somebody who's just gonna lead. And there's that. always those clauses, bro. Like, like if something happens or or this happens, like they yeah. automatically get this much and stuff. And like yeah. people, bro. Like I, I had a, um, I had a manager approach me from from Hollywood Media, mm. and like they're cool people. I talk to them on the phone. I mean, they don't like. And I, I know people that are with them and everything, but like. P I, I had to get a lawyer just to make sure because I want to make sure everything is, is straight and like I had to pay quite a bit for a lawyer but at the end of the day once I talked to my lawyer I realized so many things that like in the long term I, w I would obviously make that money back and save myself like a big hassle because mm, yeah. like some of these agreements it's like if you don't do this by this time you automatically are, are with our admin deal program thing it would take an extra 15% or something it's like what mm. the heck yeah, it's like mm. just ways to profit off you not being a lawyer or somebody who knows the exact terms and shit. So the way I see it, like if you have a lawyer and that's basically you're basically set. You have a lawyer. Make sure you research and you're going to the right websites to collect your different royalties and stuff like that. Mm. Basically fine. Yeah, that's how it's set up for me right now. If you're if you're approached by someone you know, like they're connected in the industry, like that's a different story. But. Mm. You also got a thing when stuff like that, they'll be focusing on like their bigger producers and stuff like that too. Facts. That's awesome. But there's they lawyers doing them. doing admin deals as well. Like that, they'll yeah. admin your yeah, everything for you as well. Like your your actual lawyer will do it. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, some some I seen some lawyers these days. It's like they're not only lawyers. They'll kind of branch off and make their own brand just off of the producer that they they work with, and like give you yeah. other services and shit. It's like that's a smart mm. move on their part, and it's like could also be useful get your lawyer to do everything for you in a way but yee uh 
let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all got a backup plan? Like, do you, like, say, wait. Like, say you're producing. Like, for me, I'm full-time, and I don't go to school and shit. So, like, a backup plan for me would be, like, to go to school and, like, get a diploma. So, I always have, like, yeah. something I can get a job with. Do you guys have a backup plan already, or do you, like, not have one? I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I plan on, I plan on still, like, pursuing music in some type of way. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to um, university and stuff like that. Still trying to get my diploma. That's why I'm saying, like, if I like get a plate, a couple placements that I know can set me up for a long time, mm. I may drop out. But yeah. it's like I, th- I feel like from that I'm gaining that like you're pretty much set on finishing school since you already pretty much started and it's like yeah. not a good yeah. enough reason to drop out at this point. Yeah, okay. I'm second year going in there. So and how how long is your uh, program gonna last for? Uh. I think this is my. I think it's three years. So. It's your last year, basically, yeah. Yeah, two more years. Yeah, so definitely, if I did. Oh, you got two more years. Cause I got this year coming, and then one year after that. Okay, so I guess yeah. If going platinum and getting all the well, I'm not sure if you collected or whatever, but like, if going platinum wasn't enough for you to drop out, so I guess yeah. you pretty much are staying. Because I'm trying to trying to build up my like website and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Yee. What about you, Sassy? I'm still in school. Like, it's hard to balance. Um, I mean, in, in my opinion, school and music. But like, at the end of the day, I don't know. Like, I, I could go outside and my hand could get chopped off. So then I'm kind of screwed with making making music. You know what I mean? Mm, like, there's right. so many different things that could happen. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna probably gonna finish school. Like, I'm taking like business in university. Mm. I really have no interest in like actually working as like an accountant or whatever, but I know if I wanted to do music as a career, if I had a degree, it would actually be able to help me <clears throat> like go further with music, even if it's beyond just making beats. Like, I don't know if I have a business background, maybe I could go into like management or something. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you could kind of like fuse your, like your interests yeah. and your degree. Yeah. Together. Cause I don't, I like, I really don't want to be working um as like a, i got a desk job like nine to five type thing and mm. like i've already had a few jobs like i work at uh, they have dairy queen i think in, <laughs> yeah, in canada in the u.s yeah. and i worked at adidas as well and like just working for somebody like having someone tell me what to do i mean i know that's kind of how the world works but i hate it so much mm. so like at the end of the day i'll go to school but i really want to do something on my own and i know that i'll probably need some type of like piece of paper that kind of certifies me i mean you don't need it but like i know it will help in the long run okay yeah, yeah. that's kind of why i'm still gonna go to school but i really want to do music as a career but i know right now it's really not like yeah, I'm, I'm not i'm not like platinum or, or anything i'm just kind of focusing on the whole website internet thing but i mean that could also fall off at any time so i need mm. something more stable before i were to like drop out of school or something Say you were like in the studio every day with uh, Lil Baby or some shit, right? And he drops an album twice, three times a year, and pretty much got like three, four placements on every album. Like, would that be enough for you to drop out, or oh, yeah. would you still be Definitely. like, "I'm anything could happen. Lil Baby could like not mess with me for that." Like one day. I mean, it depends. It really depends at the end of the day how much I'm earning and like how consistent it is. Mm, Checks right? only come a couple times out of the year, you know. Yeah, uh, you need something a little more consistent to come. Exactly, to and I, I don't want it to be like one one check is like really nice, and then the next check is like I'm screwed. Yeah. Like I can't pay rent or something. Mm. Like I need something that's like consistent and guaranteed. Yeah. But what if the nature of your job isn't that? Because like music isn't really guaranteed. It's all creative work, so it's based yeah. on how the public views your work. And, but that's like, why you got to build your catalog because if you can get to a point where your catalog is is good enough that like at least for a while you're you're getting consistency from it okay, right okay. and then like off of that obviously you can't just i mean unless you're like freaking murder beats or something like you got to put your money in other places as well to work for you if you're just yeah. trying to make money off music okay. like then then whatever happens you're you're not going to really be maximizing your your like potential you got to invest mm. in property and that type of stuff like that's what i'm trying to start doing Thanks. yeah i've been working on that too 
So yeah, what so investments do you guys have? Do you guys have what, what investments do you guys have? Like uh, you invest hmm, in stocks I, or something? I'm not kinda new to it. I'm still kinda learning about it, but like mm. I have like a little bit of money invested so far just to, to learn with. Investing in like stocks big. or real estate yeah, or stocks. I'm stocks. I'm looking to go into real estate, but mm. yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> going through like um university and music at the same time, kind of time consuming. Yeah, it's kind of hard yeah. to like imagine going to school, then making music, then like tending to a rental property yeah. or some shit. That'd be like you'd have to be Superman yeah. at that point, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fortunate because like my parents are, are into that stuff so I just kind of like give them some money that I'm earning and, and they kind of just do it for me mm. so yeah. I have a bit of I have a bit of investments in like real estate right now and then some stuff in like some very safe um stock like like I don't know what they're called I think it's like my, my parents and brother something. helped me with that stuff yeah it's like something that will return you a few percent a year but it's better than just having like, your, your money later. yeah Bro, because I get antsy. Like, you remember when I was in Ethereum and I was, we were playing oh. and I made <laughs> bucks and stuff? Yeah. Like, like, I was looking at this stuff every day, Index and it's like, yeah. it's just, it's just bad for me to look at that every day. So I just pulled out and just put something, put money in something that's just like, yeah. so nothing's guaranteed, but it's just safe. Yes. So even if it's like three percent growth every year or something, I mean, that, yeah. that that's still profit. Yeah, somebody in chat was saying those are like index funds or some shit. I think that's it. Yeah, oh, yeah. the S and P five hundred. I have some money like, in that. They mm. barely move, but in the long run, I mean, you're you're almost guaranteed to make some type of money. But you got to wait like 10, 20 years to actually see like some good numbers. Yeah, yeah. but I feel like um, like putting long term money into something is good because then it could like compound and then make you like three k a month mm. if you just wait twenty years. And that could be like your like your main source of income if you invest enough eventually. Yeah, yeah. that's good though. You never know how long music's gonna last, so yeah, it's never guaranteed. But yeah. yeah, that's why I think they they say like you gotta have like seven different sources of income or some shit. So, yeah. Yeah. bro, that's one thing I've learned. Um, cause like before music, I was like, I used to resell clothes, like uh, Supreme and all that stuff. <laughs> and like, one thing I'm, I'm really happy about music as like a sample maker is I don't have to spend extra time really doing anything. Like if I spend one hour making a sample, that sample, I could sell it. I could send it to like a, a different producer or I could make a beat on it. And like, I don't have to take any extra time, but like reselling. If you like, if there's a drop this day, then you have to wake up early this day, all this stuff, like you have to put way more time into it. Mm. But like with music, it's like, you can, you can, you can make one thing and you can use it for like several different opportunities. Yeah. That's the whole, uh, scalability type shit. Like, yeah. If you, um, mm. if I don't know, it's like, like it's kind of the same thing. That's why I started uh, streaming on Twitch. Cause it's kind of hard to make a tutorial and it's only for YouTube, but like now I'm mm -hmm. like I'm doing some Twitch, then I'll edit it for YouTube, and then I'll edit it for TikTok, and like it'll it'll be more like uh, I don't know, it's like less effort, but you get more out of it in a way. It's like more scalable. Yeah. So, yeah. Same with the sample. It's just more efficient. Yeah. Getting getting to like that point where you're super efficient with stuff, and like you're making a sample, making a beat, and like it's satisfying. Yeah. It's like it makes you feel productive too, especially it helps with like. Like I have friends that they have to get up at like six a.m. for work and stuff, right? Mm. And it's like your whole day is shot if you're working an eight-hour shift. <clears throat> you like miss out on stuff mm. uh, sometimes if like people are doing things. But like with something like music, you really can kind of work your own hours, and and the one thing you're doing has so many opportunities for you to either just network or actually make make like profit off of it, like anything. Mm, that's facts. Yeah, there's always something you could be doing. So mm. yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. Music is definitely cool, but it's always it's always like a balance between music and having something stable. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm in the process of trying to make more income streams right now. Yeah, definitely. Once so, once I get there, I'm gonna be satisfied. But like, I still am. Mm. I'm like, yeah, definitely on the like the fence, like. This shit could be gone tomorrow, to be honest. If I get hacked yeah. 
on my YouTube, that could be like a detrimental hmm. thing. Or if my PayPal yeah. is broken, that's literally where I get like most of my income. So, yeah. Bro, PayPal, yeah, that, that's, PayPal's kind of sketchy. Like sometimes people's accounts just get locked and stuff. Like, bro, I don't know how stuff. PayPal is still a thing, bro. <laughs> Yeah. Literally, when I used to resell, I had I probably had like eight or nine different PayPal's because my stuff would get locked. I have like like a couple grand sitting in an account. And I never could get it because like I can't even use my PayPal right now. I reached my spending limit. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, people want me to like, like verify myself or something. Yeah, but the problem is, it's literally the biggest and the most convenient way as to yeah. buy stuff, but it's yeah. the worst for like selling. Or like receiving payments and you know, mm -hmm. like at a whole like yeah. i don't know for me so far if i'm being like um just dead objective like getting a check is more like reliable than paypal because i know it's like unless it bounces pretty much going to be guaranteed by paypal you could make 500 dollars and then they suspend your account and you lost that 500 dollars or whatever so yeah bro and even though paypal says there's seller protection and stuff I've had mm -hmm. multiple times when people like they don't even file a claim through PayPal to like get their money back or something because they like spent on their mom's credit card or something. They just call the bank and the bank will will charge back and then I have to dispute it after I already have like a negative balance in my PayPal. Ooh, and like yeah. nothing really that can that can help me there, even though it says I have all the seller protection. Like if you call your bank mm -hmm. and you can you can very easily charge back a purchase, which is it's so stupid. Yeah, the whole selling digital products is like kind of hard with the whole chargeback type thing. But yeah, if you sell like a t-shirt, yeah. you can prove that he got the t-shirt because you have a shipper's label or whatever. But like an MP3 file could be harder to like, I don't know, harder to like. That's also why I put everything on, on websites now, like all income through yeah. my websites. Because when I was doing stuff before where it's just like, uh, like giving them my PayPal to send me money, like they could just dispute the transaction way after and i could be screwed if if yeah. like it went through mm. but at least with a website you have receipts you have actual products on there i mean at least it's some type of proof yeah. that like you actually sold a, an actual product yeah but it's because yeah, i've never had a problem to shopify and beat stars mm, facts but, uh, yeah people well, kind of know that anything. once you get it off of like a website even if it's a, like an mp3 file it's pretty much set in stone like everybody has records of you getting it so you can't say mm -hmm. i didn't get it or i don't know mm -hmm. not like a collab like if you're just charging like tell some if you're telling somebody to like send you money like you can't actually yeah. prove it if it's just word of mouth but like on a website yeah. it's kind of like proven but yeah yeah let's get to one last topic is how how do you guys stay motivated with music being a, like a creative kind of job and just don't force it don't force it like if i'm not if i'm not feeling something that i'm making or i'm sitting i've been sitting there for like an hour and i haven't been able to cook up anything mm -hmm. i just kind of take a break away from it and then just come back later or something like that facts but what if what if it's been like three weeks and you you kind of have to force it like what's like i don't know how do you get to i sometimes it? just like to look at like cook up videos or something like that Okay, yeah, get I just go and search producers that I like or just listen to a lot of music too. Mm, okay. Like old music. Hmm. So what what type I of music do you have specific or uh, like nineties R and B, like seventies, eighties soul stuff. Mm, yeah. For me it's been like, stuff like that. Joe to see. I, I went back and listened to so many of their songs. Or I don't even yeah. know if it's a person or if it's a group or whatever, but I listen to a lot of Jodeci sometimes, and that gets me inspired, but yeah. How about you, Sassy? Same as Malik, like, if I can't figure something out, I'll just go do something else. And usually, usually within a day, like, if I listen to something I just made, I'll come up with a new idea. Mm. But then, like, sometimes when I'm really, like, unmotivated, and I mean, this kind of sounds kind of, like, self-centered, I guess, or, like, like I'm breaking or something, but, like, I'll listen to the to like I don't know my young boy song or something because that was like my biggest goal when I first started. Usually when I just listen to the song, I'm just like, well, I already did this, so like, why am I why am mm. I like not motivated right now? Let me go let me go do something. Usually that, yeah, that like right. cures the unmotivation. Yeah, looking back at yeah, it's kind of weird how 
how it works but like looking back at what you did is like yo i could do it again it's like it wasn't that hard i don't know why i'm struggling right now just get it done in a way it's like yeah i mean i've seen people like that have been making beats for i don't know like 10 years or something right and mm. i mean they're still doing it and they might not have the results as other people and then me myself i'm like like i've, I've been playing piano like, i've been had i had a music background since i was like three or something but like i really started taking producing seriously like about a year year and a half ago and i'm like i've already done this in this amount of time like it, if i'm already doing this it shouldn't be hard to keep going and, and i'm sure i'll see more results after that facts it's definitely something i do too like i look at everything i accomplish and like how bad i used to want the shit that i have right now i'm like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i definitely could keep going it's like it's not that hard to be honest if I already did it, I could do it again. In terms of motivation, I don't really lack that, but like when it comes to like just thinking of ideas and stuff to build mm. off of, yeah, I, I never have gotten beat block sampling things. That's mm. why like I always find myself listening to old music and finding something to sample because like once you hear that song that you want to sample, you know what you're going to do with it. Yeah, it kind of gives you like, you already like, I don't know, it's like an instinct in a way. It's like you already know what you want to yeah. add to it and shit it's crazy and once i start doing that i kind of just build off of that moment too and then i end up like mm. picking up like five million or something after that yeah it's definitely a good a good idea if you're ever having like a block making something from scratch is just starting off with a sample or a sample starter or whatever like another idea. I remember one thing i've noticed for like the last three four months is like anytime i'm trying to make a new melody i'm always using the same like progression or like rhythm mm. Like that's something that I'm having trouble getting over. Like I, I'm trying to like I don't know do the piano melody. I'm always doing the same like arpeggiated chords at the bottom and everything, and I'm starting to get frustrated with that. But then I'll just like I'll record it, and then I'll I'll just go crazy with effects and like reverse and halftime all this stuff. Usually I come up with something different, then I'll build off of that. Mm, yeah, flipping samples definitely. Well, I was talking uh, to Fern about this too, like flipping samples is definitely like crazy. If you use it like in the process of making a melody instead of like at the end. It yeah. Definitely, like mm. it, it kind of gives you a different look to something that is already pretty good. But like, I don't know if it's also like, right, and I used to never render, render my patterns. Like I would just, I would just make the pattern and I leave it. Mm. But when I started rendering it, like I started chopping stuff and moving stuff and it's like a whole different type of like um, process and it, it definitely makes some cool stuff after. Yeah, definitely. Like playing with audio clips is crazy, to be honest. But I, I yeah. like the way I do it is I record a lot of stuff. I don't usually use VSTs like that. Yeah. So I kind of been doing that, but I actually didn't realize how much of a gem that is for like people that make vst melodies and shit mm -hmm. but yeah that's about it though producer talk episode two loki was a success <laughs> man we need to play warzone again sometime though no cap we'll do a warzone, do a warzone stream Thanks. people will see a side of us that they've never seen before yeah we're all common <laughs> shit right now but once we get on warzone though cheese <laughs>